Glad to see you on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. That's right, March the 10th, 2021, the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a blessing to be alive. Oh, yes, it is. It's a blessing to be alive. And we thank God for you on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. We hope and pray that you are able to enjoy some of the spring weather. Amen. Well overdue. I know well overdue. And thank God that the snow is, amen, melted away. And it looks like, it appears that we're going to kind of get back to some sense of normal or normalcy in this life. Uh, and thank God you made it. Amen. A lot has happened. A lot is still happening, but God has smiled on you and on me as well. And so I'm glad to be in his service one more time. Yes, I am. Uh, we want to encourage you. Want to encourage you. Keep on praying. Don't you ever stop praying. Keep worshiping the Lord. Keep reading and studying your Bible. Keep supporting your church. Keep praying for pastors and families. Keep on keeping on. That's right. Keep on keeping on. Don't stop even in the midst of it all. I want to send out an announcement, and I want to make sure that you hear it clearly and hear it from me. The first Sunday, I want someone to type this in the comment section. The first Sunday in June, the first Sunday in June of this year, that's right, the first Sunday in June, we're going to have in gathering services at the Antioch Church. We're going to open the doors of the church. That's right. First Sunday in June, we're going to start out with a 50% capacity of crowd. We ask that you would still practice social distancing, uh, wear your masks. So once again, first Sunday in June, the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, by faith, we're going to open the doors of the church. In other words, we're going to invite people to come in. So we want you to, again, put that in the comment section. First Sunday in June, we'll be announcing it leading up to June for the 10, 15 a.m. worship service. That's right, 10, 15 a.m. worship service. And all during the month of June, we're going to open the church up not only for the 10, 15 a.m. worship service, but also for noonday Bible study at 12.30 and at 6.30. That's right, 12.30 and 6.30. We're also, amen, encouraging you to come out to Sunday school at 9 a.m. And we've already extended. The doors of the church have been open for Sunday school in service gatherings for Sunday school. And we only had one person to show up. That's right, only one person to show up. Um, in addition to those who are always here on Sunday. You know, you hear people talk about, I sure miss church, and I sure want to get back in church. And Well, let's see. Let's see how excited you are, amen, to get back in the Antioch church. So 50% capacity. So I would advise you to arrive early, because once we reach that 50% capacity, we have spaces that we are marking off, then we're going to have to hold off. Uh, just want to be a little safe, but we'll try it in June, see how we respond. Want it safe for everyone, okay? So once again, first Sunday in June, Antioch will open the doors for in-service gatherings here at the church. We'll be inside the church, amen, for our Sunday school and our worship service as well. And also, during the whole month of June, we'll continue this for the whole month of June to see how we can, amen, tweak and, amen, make some adjustments. Um, and we also want to say to you that after each service, the church has to be clean. We cannot leave out and go in like we used to. Pews have to be wiped down, and there's a lot that has to take place uh, between each services. So as soon as we finish with worship and we exit the building, before we can invite others back in. Amen. We got to clean it all over again because COVID is still on the loose. What are you saying, Pastor? 
For those of you that feel led of God. So you know what, Pastor? I don't mind helping to clean the church. If you want to be one of those persons that want to wipe down pews or wipe off doorknobs, amen, and come in and be a part of that, amen, you just contact us here at the church at 255-8148. Call us on the church line at 859-255-8148. Leave your name and your telephone number or just inbox me right here on Facebook or on our website as well. You can send us an email. So there are many ways to reach us. Just let us know. See, I love to volunteer to help clean the church. Amen. And I miss church and I miss being there. I've heard that a thousand times over and over again. Well, let's see. Let's see. You know, action speaks louder than words. That's right. We're going to have a special kickoff service the first Sunday in June. So we're going to have something special for those of you that, amen, are coming back, amen, to the house of God. And there will be a special word from the Lord that we shall share with you first Sunday in June, Lord's will. All right, so you have the announcement and you're the first to hear it. Amen, so spread the word. Now run and tell that. Amen, spread the word. We also want to encourage you to continue your support by way of givelify.com, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, givelify.com. Amen, you can download it, that app, download it. It's safe and secure. And... Uh, Submit your donations. Continue to do that for those of you that have it. Also, thank God for those of you that are leaving your donations, amen, your contributions, your tithes and offerings here at the church. Some of you drive by and drop it in the front mail box. Others, amen, you drop it in the mail. So whatever you have done, amen, to continue during the pandemic, to sow your seed, amen. I promise the Lord going to bless your need because in the time of crisis, you were there for your church. You was not just one of those members who talk a good game. You were there for your church. And guess what? Your church ought to be there for you. Amen. So your church and your pastor, amen, we've been here for you, and you've been here for us, and we love you for that. We thank God for you. Thank God for those that are supporting us as well, this ministry. You are part of our family. So we thank God for your support and your love and whatever we can do, amen, to minister to you, to let you know that God is real. Please don't hesitate to contact us. I promise you the Lord is a kind God. Yes, he's kind. Yeah, he's definitely kind. And so today we're going to start our studies. Um, our walk through the Bible studies. We're going to pick it up in Genesis. And we're going to be, if the Lord say so, we're going to be in chapter 17. Uh, and we're going to try to cover chapter 17 and chapter 18 and possibly, possibly, we may get a chance to read a few verses in chapter 19. So the Bible bus, amen, we're pulling off, amen, everybody get on board now. Get on board the bus because we're getting ready to take off. And this series has been entitled, The Whole Word for the Whole World for the Whole Man. That's right. The Whole Word for the Whole World for the Whole Man. If you've never read the entire Bible, just reading it, studying it, I want you to be a part of our partners. Amen. I want you to partner with us. Amen. As we go through the entire Bible. Amen. Drop us a letter. Amen. An email or inboxes and give us, you know, send a message of encouragement. Pray for us as we pray for you. We want to remember all of our sick and shut in. Thank God that Sister Juanita Mobley has come through surgery. Amen. And, um, She's at home now, from what I'm understanding, and it's a slow process, but God is good, so you pray for her. Also, I want you to keep in mind that we have so many others that are standing in the need of prayer. Do you hear me? They're standing in the need of prayer. Remember Sister Martha Ann Cole, amen, one of our senior members of our church. We haven't forgot about you, amen, Sister Cole, amen, we're praying for Sister Martha Ann praying for you as well. God is able. We're praying for Pam, Sister Pam and Richard. Amen. God bless you. The Allen family, Pam and Richard Allen. Uh, we're praying for you, Brother Allen. We're praying for you, Sister Allen. We want you to know that God loves you. Amen. God is a mighty good God and God cares about you. And we want you to know from, amen, from the heart and mouth of the pastor that we pray for you earnestly. And there are many others that we're praying for as well. Time did not permit us to call everybody's name, but you know that God is able. 
And we want you to know that when it's all over and said and done, Jesus and his joy will give you strength. Did you hear what I said? Jesus and his joy will give you strength. Let us pray now. Father God, we love you. Thank you for this time and for your word and thank you for this moment. We pray that your word would have free course. And as we get back to gathering and as schools begin to open up and we start to circulate and intermingle again, we pray that you would keep your hand upon us. You left us here for a reason and not just for a season. Oh, glory, we made it through the pandemic. Oh, hallelujah to your name. Made it through it. And so when many others didn't, we did. We love you now, dear God. We thank you that you spared our lives. I don't take that lightly. And so, Father God, we want you to know how much we appreciate you. Bless now, oh God, your word, and may your word have free course. Thank you for those that are supportive of the ministry and this, your servant. Through it all, the thick and the thin, the up and the down, the bad and the good. Amen. The right and even the wrong. Thank you for those who are faithful to this church and faithful, amen, in their love and support for this, your servant, their pastor. We pray that thy will be done. Forgive us of so many of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we're in Genesis chapter 17. And last time that we met, I was mobile, amen, and I want to make sure that we continue. Oh, bless the Lord that we continue the Bible series each Wednesday, 52 Wednesdays out of the year. My goal and objective is to be right here, if the Lord say so, to be right here to share with you through it all, to be faithful and committed, to be committed and faithful. That's right. And so we're going to move right along. Here we go. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1, 2, and 3. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you and I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, now be sure you spread this message. Push the share button. Amen. Text someone, email someone, send somebody a note. Somebody, I promise you, I say it every week, somebody is in need to hear this lesson. Somebody needs to hear this. It's going to help somebody. It's going to help you. Don't you determine for other people. Amen. Let them determine for themselves. Amen. You push the share button right there. Keep pushing that share button. You push it a hundred times. Amen. We're trying to reach as many souls, as many people as we can in such a very critical hour in which we live. God is speaking. I want you to hear this. Abram is 99 years old. The reason why the writer is giving you his age is to let you know that 13 years have passed. All right? 13 years have passed. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Thirteen years have passed, and Hagar has given birth to Ishmael, the concubine, the concubine wife to Abram, if you would. Sarah's servant girl. So Ishmael is now thirteen years of age, as we discovered. In chapter 16, Abraham had a lot of drama in his house because he had two wives, <laughs> one legal, one illegal, and the one that was illegal, or we would call what old folk used to call a man living in what is called a man shack pack marriage. That's right. They call it shack pack marriage. You know, that's when you live with somebody you're not married to them. That's right. Common law. Hello, somebody. So, Hagar, the Egyptian, is now pregnant at that time, 13 years later. And it was all a part of 
Sarah's idea. She got upset. She got frustrated. She lost faith in God and said, I can't give you children, and I know you want a child, so go on in there and lay with my servant girl. And she's young and vibrant and healthy. And so Abram goes in, and sure enough, she gives birth to a son. Well, Abram shouldn't have done that. From, this, from that day forward, Abram's going to have nothing but problems in his family. Can you imagine coming home from work and, amen, you got two and three spouses and, you know, five and six different kids running around or whatever, and neither, nobody's getting along. Well, that is typical of sin because God did not tell Abram to do this. Sarah did, and Sarah was out of order. And not only that, Sarah's going to pay for it because Sarah's going to give birth to a son named Isaac, and Isaac and Ishmael will always be at odds with one another. So she has, she's going to have to bear the pain of that in her heart and experience that as a mother to watch her child constantly be in conflict, amen, someone, with his half-brother. Are y'all with me? Same daddy, different mothers. Ishmael represents the flesh, the ways of the flesh. Isaac is the promised seed, all right? Ishmael is not the promised seed of God. Ishmael is just the seed of Abraham. But because that he is the seed of Abraham, or due to the fact that he is the seed of Abraham, God is going to bless Ishmael. They're nomads. They're the Arabs of the desert. They're wealthy with oil. So he's going to bless them. It's going to be multitudes and multitudes. And what a lot of people don't know is that Ishmael also gave birth to nations. So it wasn't just Isaac that gave birth to nations and princes. Ishmael also gave birth to nations and princes. And these nations are going to collide. Because there's always going to be a war with the flesh and the spirit. And a friend of mine told me this. He said, Tyler, just remember this. Stay in God's will and stay out of his way. Hello, somebody. Stay in God's will and stay out of his way. And any time we give way to the flesh, we're getting in God's way. And guess what, y'all? You don't want to be in God's way. And the choices that we make today, we're going to have to live with tomorrow. It may appear that nothing's happening now. But I promise you, the choices we make in the flesh today, we'll have to live with tomorrow. And not only tomorrow, but even sometimes our seed, our children, our family, they have to live with it as well. So be mindful of the choices you make. She got impatient, told Abram to go in there and lay with that, amen, concubine, this Egyptian handmaid that was Sarah's servant girl. She served Sarah. She was faithful to Sarah. And the girl runs off, and the angel met her out in the wilderness and out in the desert, told her to go back, go back to and submit herself to Sarah and submit herself to Abraham. And she went back to submit herself to Sarah, and the child grew up right there in the homestead of Abraham. But I'm going to tell you something. Right now, before we go any further, things are going to get bad. Oh, it's going to get bad. We're going to see this in a minute. You think it's bad now with drama in the home? Domestic violence is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. This stuff been going on a long time. Amen. Children with half, you know, stepchildren with fathers and amen. Same fathers, different mothers and different mothers. Same father. It's nothing new. Children that have been treated as outcasts, others have been included. It's nothing new. Are y'all listening to me? And so sin, amen, there is no new sin. It's all old stuff. May look different, but it's old stuff. And there's no sin that the Bible will not cover. It's going to cover it. It's going to talk about it. And it's going to share, teach you how that sin does carry consequences. All right? Abram is a man of God. He loves God. And let me pause right there and say, just because Abraham is a man of God, just because Sarah is a woman of God, both of them love God. Please hear me when I tell you this. God has already justified Abraham <laughs> as being a man of faith. And Sarah is right beside him. But it doesn't mean that Abraham won't make mistakes or intentionally do some things wrong. And I guess there are those, even Sarah, same thing. I guess there are those out there that look at me and you sometimes. And if we say something or do something wrong, then all of a sudden we're wiped off. You know, it's, we're no longer... A 
Amen. Decent. We're no longer a person. We're no longer God's children. Nobody can take away from you salvation. Hello, somebody. Once you are God's child, you are God's child. You are covered and washed in the blood of the Lamb. So don't let nobody try to perceive or project upon you where you need to be in Christ in a judgmental, watch this, in a judgmental accusation or statement or manner. Are you with me? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 7, judge not lest you be judged. Hello? It's not our position. No, it isn't. To say this, to say that as it relates to someone's personal relationship with God. You have nothing to do with that. And so it doesn't mean that Abraham is going to be wiped off the scene. God's already promised him. <laughs> I'm going to bless you. You're going to have nations. You're going to have seed. You're going to have, amen, kingdoms shall come from you, man. I'm going to bless the earth because of you. Oh, glory to his name. And God is going to continue to talk to Abraham. And God is going to continue to use Abraham. And God's going to continue to walk with Abraham. And Abraham's going to continue to walk with God. Are y'all listening to me? He's going to stay with Abraham. So Abraham didn't lose his place with God because he did what he did. He's going to do some more stuff that he shouldn't do. And so you got to watch people. You got to watch these little insinuendos. Amen. And these, amen, these subliminal messages that people try to, amen, bring before you to write you off as no longer being a child of God, no longer being able to be used by God. God knew what Abraham was going to do, right, wrong, or indifferent, before he did it. God knew that before God chose Abraham. Now, it doesn't make Abraham right in what he did, but it doesn't mean that God is through with Abraham. Hello, somebody. So this is a good lesson for us, is it not? Abraham has lied about his wife. we already been over that. Abraham has now, amen, had a child outside of wedlock, listening to his wife. All right, that's number two. If you want to talk about, amen, Abraham's mistakes or Abraham's errors or Abraham's wrongs. Now, most of us, if Abraham was a leader in the church, we wouldn't come to this Bible study no more. Wouldn't come to Sunday school class no more. No, we wouldn't follow Abraham. No. Most of us would write him off. Yeah, he went out there and lied about his wife. He went out there and had a child. He went out, oh, we'd write him off real quick. Oh, yes, we would. But aren't you glad that God does not treat us like we treat one another? Huh? Aren't you glad that God doesn't treat you and me like we treat each other? Oh, glory to his name. What are you saying? Get this down in your spirit. Don't you let others write you off when God continues to write you in. Tweet that. Hello, somebody. Don't you let others write you off. Somebody put that in the comments section. When, as, when God continues to write you in. I'll say it one more time. Do not allow others to write you off while God continues to write you in. Hello, somebody. As long as God writes you in, as long as he writes you in. Matter of fact, those who write you off, Amen. Guess what? Find you some new friends. Hello, somebody. Find you some new friends. Now, watch this. Abraham, chapter 17, receives a revelation. Somebody say revelation. A revelation, 13 years later, and the Bible says that the Almighty God, El Shaddai, or El Shaddai, which means strong so as to overpower the all-powerful God, all right? He's telling Abraham that everything he's promised him, he's going to bring it to pass. He said, walk before me and be perfect. In other words, Abraham, you strive for perfection at all times. Hold on to your faith because you're going to be challenged. Many Tests and trials and tribulations and temptations are coming your way. And he tells him, walk before me. Watch this. Going to bless you. I know that you have created a situation with Hagar. Learn from it and walk before me. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. You have created a situation that God is not pleased with. 
But don't run off in a corner and start, amen, sitting on your pity pot and feel that as if, if it's over. No. Get up. Go before the Lord. Acknowledge what you've done and walk with God and walk before God upright. See that? Watch this. And I will make my covenant between you and multiply your seed exceedingly. I'm going to enlarge your territory and your seed. That's a promise. I'm going to do it, Abraham. And look at Abraham and he falls on his face, verse 3. And God talked with him. It's not like talking to the Lord. Abraham failed. Which means he reverenced, he bowed, he laid prostrate before God. When was the last time you got on your knees? When was the last time you got down and bowed before God? I mean, got down and, and bowed before the Lord. Just, just got down on your knees. Just got down and cried out to the Lord. Just, just got down on your knees and, and prayed. When was the last time you did that? You got down. When was the last time you, you, you really just prostrated, amen, like they did in Bible days and Amen. They would take and just go down. Amen. Constantly bow before the Lord. Amen. Just constantly bow before the Lord. Just constantly bow before the Lord. Just constantly bow before the Lord. And I hear somebody saying, well, Reverend, my arthritis won't let me do it. Reverend, my, my muscles in my back and my knees are not what they used to be. Well, what about when you didn't have arthritis? Oh, glory to his name. What about when you didn't have aches and pains in your knee? What are you saying, preacher? Do what you can while you're able, because the time is going to come, you're going to want to and not be able to. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Chapter 17 of Genesis, verses 4 through 8. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and so shall you be a father of what? Many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram. And Abram means exalted father. But your name shall be Abraham. Which means father of what? Multitudes. Father of many. The father of the multitudes. The father of the multitudes. For father of many nations have I made you. Your seed will continue and continue and continue. And continue and continue throughout the ages. Verse 6 and 7 and 8. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. Look at that. Whatever you need, I'm going to supply. And I will establish my covenant between you and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto you. And to your seed after you. Look at that. Notice it says everlasting covenant. And I will give unto you and to your seed and after you the land wherein you are stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God again. God is reassuring Abraham. The promise I made to you is going to continue. Verses 9. Watch this. Chapter 17 of Genesis, we're going to read verses 9 through 14. All right, here we go. And God said to Abram, you shall keep my covenant, therefore, you and your seed after you in their generations. Keep my covenant. Covenant is what? An agreement between two or more parties. All right, keep our agreement. Keep your vow unto me, Abram. I'm vowing a vow. That I'm going to make sure that all of your seed will be blessed. I'm vowing a vow unto myself. Regardless of what you do or don't do, he's letting him know that this shall come to pass. However, Abraham, you have a part to play too. See, oftentimes we want God to do what he's going to do, but we lack on what we ought to do. Amen. God always gives us something to do. Don't sit back and say, well, I'm just going to pray on it. Well, God is going to say, yeah, pray on it, but you need to get up and start moving. See, he's always going to put something in action for us to do. God don't bless laziness. It don't work like that. Watch this. This is my covenant, which you shall keep. I'm in chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 10. 
between me and your seed after you, and every man child among you shall be circumcised. So the covenant had only one outward ordinance, circumcision. All right? There's only one outward ordinance, and that's circumcision. And those of you that are above the age of 18, you know what circumcision means or what it is. This was done as an outward sign to identify the people of God versus other nations. But it was also done as a token of the covenant agreement between Abraham and God and the seed of Abraham. But there's another reason why. There's a spiritual reason. And this is called the spiritual circumcision when you get into the New Testament. Stick with me. The cutting away of the flesh. We'll talk about that when we get to the New Testament because Paul talks about the circumcision, amen, of the flesh. There are certain, amen, I would say um, behaviors and manners that we need to what? Circumcise, cut off. The flesh is no good, amen. There's nothing good about the flesh, nothing. We got fleshly ways, fleshly attitudes, fleshly conversation, fleshly thoughts. Somebody's even looking right now at you and me with a judgmental spirit. That's the flesh. Hello, somebody. Now watch this. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. There it is, verse 11. And it shall be a token of covenant between me and you. See that? Where, what age do we start at? Verse 12 says, and he who is eight days old, not eight years, but eight days. I've heard one particular person say it was eight years. No, the text says eight days old. That's what it says. Start early. Look at that. Eight days old. Eight means new beginning in the Bible. Hello, somebody. The number eight is new beginning. Somebody write that down. The number eight means new beginning, fresh beginning. So, and he who is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation, every man child in your generation. He who was born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of your seed, eight days old. All right, eight days old. Make sure the healing of the body and the skin, amen, is in the proper, amen, place it needs to be. So when the circumcision takes place, the child won't bleed to death. So God had a twofold. God knew what he's doing. He made man. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Now, every male child is to be circumcised. And this is going to include the entirety of the nation of Israel. You'll see that. Thirteen, he who was born in your house, he who was brought with your money, must needs be circumcised. My covenant shall be in your flesh for what? An everlasting covenant. All right? So Paul, so he's letting them know, here is, here is the covenant. Here it is right here. Verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of the foreskin is not circumcised, that so shall be cut off from his people. He has what? Broken my covenant. In effect, any Israelite who refused to be circumcised, or mothers who refused to circumcise their baby boys had broken the covenant. Now you got some mothers and fathers like that. Oh yes you do. God says this, they'll say no I'm not doing it. <laughs> sure will, just as bad and big and bold as I will. First of all, who gave you the child? <laughs> Secondly, who helped you to get through amen, the birth process, the pregnancy, who helped God Hello, somebody. Who put the seed in the man in order for you to have a child? God. So it all goes back to God anyway. But you got some, even in this day and time, God says this, the parents go the opposite way. And the parents and the child suffer for it. So God was not going to tolerate it. Amen. He was just not going to tolerate it. He's letting them know, hey, don't force them. Don't try to make them. If the mother said, nope, I'm not doing it. And if the, if the man says, no, I'm not doing it, Paul, he tell, he's telling Abram right here, kick him out. Put him out of the camp. Because they represent rebellion. 
My God, you got some stubborn, rebellious people in this world. Oh, yes, you do. Just as stubborn as they can be. Got them in the church. We got them in our families. Suffer. You see them suffering. Still stubborn and rebellious. It would seem to me, amen, that after so much suffering, I don't want to suffer no more. But how many of y'all know some people are just going to suffer by choice? They just enjoy suffering. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, I mean, if, you, if you're going through hell, why do you want some more hell? If you're going through pain and sickness and sorrow, why do you want more pain, sickness, and sorrow in your life? That's insanity. That's insanity. Rationalize it all you want. Justify it all you want. He said that if they don't do it, cut them off. Put them out of the camp. They're an enemy. They're resistant. They're rebellious. They are stubborn. And they have nothing to do with the order of God. And you have people like that who will claim to be a part of the family of God, but are not orderly. In other words, they don't walk in the order of God. Hello, somebody. In the obedience, there it is, of God. Are y'all with me? So he said, cut them off. Don't, don't be sitting around crying and praying about it. Cut them off. If they refuse to do what I say, cut them off. Now, you got one or two of us open up the back door and let them in. Well, if you do that, God's going to get you. Because God said what? Cut them off. Cut them off. Now, verses 15 through 22, Genesis chapter 17. We're going to get to chapter 18, I promise you. And God said unto Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, which means, Sarai means my princess, by the way. And I think I've shared it with you. All right, which means that she was Abraham's princess alone. Amen. She was his princess. She was his princess. Oh, glory. Watch this. But Sarah shall be her name. Sarah, watch this, shall be her name. She is now going to be recognized as the princess of nations. Mm -hmm. The princess of nations. I didn't say queen. I said princess of nation. Now, if you call your wife or your significant other queen, that's fine. That's fine. I've heard guys call their mothers queen. I mean, you, you can go on and on and on down the line. That's fine. David called his mother queen mother. I mean, that's fine. But here, in this particular context, God said she shall be called Sarah. She shall be the princess of generations, of nations. All glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. In a sense, some have stated that she is considered to be the mother of the church because she gave birth to the promised seed, Isaac. Then you have those who say that Mary is the mother of the church. Well, Mary was the mother of Jesus. All right. Here we go. And I will bless her and give you a son also of her. You've been asking me all along about this child, Abram. I haven't forgot about you, Abraham. The child shall be born of Sarah. Oh, yes, it shall be. Yes, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of many nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Oh, she's going to bless. He's talking about increase. Then Abram fell upon his face. Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him who is a hundred years old? His laughter was a laughter of joy, not mockery. You can laugh when God does something. Sometimes it just makes you laugh. You're so excited about it. You just rejoice. And God's people got to learn to quit walking around looking all mad, mean, and depressed. Amen. Smile. <laughs> Amen. You ought to have the joy of the Lord. I'm not saying that in your spirit. I'm not saying that every day you'll be on the mountain. Every day won't be sunny. I get that. But every day won't be cloudy. Glory to his name. Amen. Don't walk around looking so sad, mean, and crazy. Amen. Throughout life is too short. God is too good. Hello, somebody. Life is too short. God is too good for you to walk around looking bitter and mean and hostile and holding grudges. Amen. He laughed. He rejoiced in laughter. Ha! Oh, Lord. Come on, Lord. You, you're blowing my mind, Lord. You're blowing my mind. Oh, my God. Sometimes the Lord will bless you so much in such a way. With so much and in such a way that you can't do nothing but just start laughing. You ever been there? Can't explain it. Just start laughing. <laughs> the Lord is good. I tell you the Lord. It wasn't a laughter of doubt or mockery. 
It was a laughter of joy because he had been waiting and waiting because they that wait upon the Lord, oh yeah, shall renew their strength. Yes, he said, it's going to happen. Abram fell on his face and started laughing. Amen. In verse 17 of chapter 17 of Genesis, how can it be? I'm 100 years old and Sarah's 90 years old. I'm 100 and she's 90. Oh, glory to his name. And Abram said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And Abram had asked the Lord that Ishmael might have some place and not be completely left out. Abram prayed for Ishmael. Let me pause right there and say, although something may have happened along the line where the child, amen, did not have what you would call, amen, the consummated upbirth. In other words, bringing and, and upbringing and birth. In other words, he may, the child may not have been born of a husband and wife, but the child was still born. And the child may not be accepted by some. It is your job as a father, it is your job as a parent to pray that that child still would not be left out. Don't you allow nobody, please hear me, I don't care if they call it a trick baby or, or whatever, a, a bastard child or a stepchild or whatever they may call that child, don't you let that child be left out. Hello, somebody. Abram prayed that Ishmael, that Ishmael would not be left out, although Ishmael represented the flesh, and although Ishmael was born of, amen, the concubine wife, the, the, the handmaiden of Sarah, Abram still prayed for that child. Lord, I want my son, my illegitimate child, I want that child of the flesh to be included in the blessing. Don't leave the child out. Have mercy, O oh God. Hello, somebody. He prayed for that child. Matter of fact, somebody prayed for us. Maybe some of us were in Ishmael at one time. Maybe we felt left out. Maybe someone didn't include us. Amen. Maybe someone looked upon us as a stepchild, a trick baby, or a bastard child. Amen. An unwanted child. Whatever it may be. Amen. Glory to his name. You ought to thank God that God didn't leave you and me out. Oh, ain't God all right? I said, ain't God all right? Again, aren't you glad that God does not treat us like we treat one another? Oh, glory to his name. 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 Verse 18, underline that. Get that down in your spirit. God still works with the Ishmaels, the children that have been ostracized and criticized and marginalized and left outside of the family circle, not invited to the family reunions and the family gatherings and they're not even looked upon as being a part of the family. Amen. You know, you hear somebody say, well, those are not my brothers and sisters. I only got some. No, if they came from your mother or your father, Amen. Guess what? They are your family because you don't have, amen, the privilege of choosing your family. Your family chose you. All glory to his name. And many of us were born into a mess, something we didn't have a boat on, something we couldn't do nothing about. Amen. We came here too late to be original. Tweet that. So with that being said, pray for him and ask God to include him, not exclude him. Matter of fact, who are we to tell God to exclude anybody? Matter of fact, who are we to exclude anybody when you think about it? Amen. After all we've been through and after all the dirt we've done, amen, silent dirt, quiet dirt, under the carpet dirt, amen, midnight dirt, all kind of dirt, sneaky dirt, creepy dirt. Are y'all listening to me? We've done some dirty stuff. Hello? But God didn't leave us out. You better hear me. Oh, glory to his name. I said, oh, glory to his name. Now, look at this. Verse 19, chapter 17 of Genesis. We got to get to chapter 18 of Genesis. Here we go. And God said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed. I know how old she is, but I'm going to cause her junction to function because I am the God that can step into the deadness of Sarah's womb and bring life out of death. Oh, God Almighty. I can bring life out of death. That's how God works. God brings, watch this, life out of death, winning out of losing. Hello, somebody. Gaining out of leaving. Yes, he does. I can't figure it out. Foolishness, amen. He can bring foolishness out of anything he wants to and flip that thing and make it profitable for the hearers. It's by the foolishness of preaching the gospel that souls have been saved. 
people call preaching foolish. Amen. Some folk look at me, call me foolish. Amen. Probably call you foolish. But God is still what? Working with us and working through us. Oh, glory to his name. Watch this. And Sarah, your wife, shall bear a son. Indeed, you shall call his name Isaac. Guess what? Isaac means laughter. Verse 19. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him, it's going to continue. Notice the covenant established is going to be established with Isaac, not Ishmael. But he's going to bless Ishmael because he's the seed of Abraham. But the covenant is established with Isaac. That's important because Isaac is what? The promised seed. The promised seed, the Messiah, Jesus, is coming through the seed of Isaac, all right? From Adam all the, way, all the way through Abraham to Noah and his sons, you're going to see the promised seed continually, all right? So the promise is made to, watch this, Isaac. Now, Ishmael, remember I talked about, be careful about leaving out people? Watch this. Verses 20, 21, 22. Get this down in your spirit. God's ways are not like our ways. Chapter 17 of Genesis. That's why we're going through the whole Bible so that we can learn better and do better. Watch this. For as for Ishmael, uh-oh, the child that was born by Haggai the Egyptian, the one that you and Sarah chose. Watch this. The one y'all chose to bring into this world, the one to act that you all got together, you submitted to that. I have heard you praying for this boy. How many parents out there praying for a child? Guess what? God is saying, I have heard you. Hello, somebody. Oh, glory to his name. Behold, I have what? Blessed him. Uh-oh, wait a minute. That's for all the folk going around talking about people and saying that they're no good, they're trash, they're useless, they're wasteless. God said, uh-uh. Abram, you interceded on behalf of your child. And I know that things started out wrong, but I know how to make things that started out wrong and turn them into right. Oh, I can bring, I can bring good out of it. Look at this. And I will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Although he's not a part of the covenant promise, he shall have what? Twelve princes. You remember I said earlier, that Ishmael gave birth to nations. A lot of people don't know that. They say Isaac gave birth to nations. So did Ishmael. It's right there. Twelve princes shall he begat, and I will make of him what? A great nation. Now he's doing this not because of Ishmael, but he's doing this because of Abraham and Abraham alone. Don't miss that. Some of us are blessed due to the prayers and the faith of our parents. Hello, somebody. And God has honored those prayers and faith, and we have been recipients of that, beneficiaries. We have inherited, amen, the blessings due to the faith and the prayers, amen, of our foreparents and our, amen, ancestors in years past. We're living on the prayers and blessings of somebody else. Here we go, verse 21, here we go. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto you at this set time in the next year. So now they know when the child is going to be born. A year from now, that's what God tells them, she's going she to give birth. Watch this, to Isaac. And the Lord left off talking with Abram, and God went up from Abraham. Woo, what a conversation. The seal covenant, 23 through 27. And Abraham took Ishmael his son and all who were in his house and all who were brought with his money, the servants and everybody, every male among the men of Abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God said, had said unto him. And Abram, Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Now he's 99 years old and he gets a circumcision. That's obedience and that's faith. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old. Remember I told you it was 13 years later. 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Verse 26, in the selfsame day, 
was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son? It's letting you know. So they're entering into the what? Covenant agreement with God. All right. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Every single man in the house of Abraham was saved by faith. <laughs> yeah. Whether well, servants or slaves or family, if they believe by faith in the God of Abraham, this token of the circumcision identified with God, amen, God is going to bless them. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, we come to 18, chapter 18 of Genesis. I'm going to read it. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to talk about it a little bit more next Wednesday, but I told you I'd get to 18. Now, here's the scene. Angels appeared. Heavenly visitors appeared to Abraham as he sat in the tent door. All right? It's hot. It's in the heat of the day. Here we go. Chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, there three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray you, from your servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, wash your feet, rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and will comfort your heart. After that you shall pass on, for therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quick three measures of fine meal kneaded and make cakes upon the earth. Now see, that wouldn't work for some people. Uh-uh. See, that's why you got to be careful. And I ain't trying to talk about nobody, but I do want to talk about what I'm talking about. You got to be careful who you get hooked up with. Hello? See, the wrong attitude, number one, they saw the man could have been sitting out there chilling and saw these people coming and not offering nothing. Said, oh, they'll be all right. Or the, the man could have been stingy. Hello. Or the man could offer him something and then went in the house and said, baby, do you mind fixing a little something? We got some people passing by. I ain't got time to do that. You do that. I'm busy watching my TV episodes right now. I no, I ain't doing it. I didn't go to the store no way. I mean, it, you know, it's kitchen dirty. I ain't got time to fool with all that. Uh, there's a pot pie in there. You can throw it in the oven. I'm trying to get you to see something. I'm trying to get you to see something. God has an order. All right, he has an order, and God also has a prescribed, watch this, arrangement for people. In other words, we choose, but God chooses what's best. See that? Sarai didn't get an attitude. Abraham was not selfish and stuck on himself, watching other people need and have needs, and said, well, I got mine, they get their own. Both of them came together and made something happen. But again, this don't work in many places today. Amen. Many homes, many environments today. Been a whole different story. I'll run down there to rallies and get them something. Go over there to White Castle or somewhere, McDonald's or go, you know, take them over there to Waffle House, whatever. You know, but I'm trying to get you to see how God works throughout the Bible. Now watch this. And Abram asked him into the tent and Sarah said, make ready. Quickly, three measures of the fine meal. Look at the respect they have for each other, Abraham and Sarah. And kneaded and make cakes upon the earth. Verse 7. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a cow. See, he's doing his part. He went out and got the meat and gave it to a young man and told him to dress it. I want you to get this ready. We're going to have a cookout. We're going to have a big time. Amen. We're going to throw down. And he took butter and milk and calf and he dressed it and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. All right? Verse 9 through 15. Like I said, I'm just going to read it. We'll come back. And they, talking about the Lord and the angels, or the three men, said unto Abraham, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, Behold, in the tent. 
And he said, notice here, they asked where Sarah was. Why? Because women in their culture did not, this is going to bless somebody right here. Somebody going to cut me off when I say this. But women in that culture were very cautious about interacting with men. It was disrespectful for a woman to be engaging conversation, amen, personality, amen, position, or anything of that nature in the company of men without the presence or permission of her husband. That's why you don't see her here. That was their custom, that was their custom in that day. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Are y'all listening to me? A woman always killed us is to hold herself what? In high esteem and respect. A virtuous woman. Are y'all with me? Sometimes women are treated and called all kinds of names and amen. They're used because of how they carry themselves. To them, it's a thrill. It's an adventure. It's a, it's a feeling. But in essence, it's a lowering of standards and morals. Hello, somebody. So here we find, they say, where's Sarah? She's where she normally is. She's in the house, handling the things of the house, managing what she manages, doing what she normally does. And they said, well, ask her to come out. Notice they asked him where she was. Woo! You know, there are some folk that can ask the spouse where the other spouse is, and they don't know. They ain't got a clue. They ain't got a clue. Watch this. And he said, Bring her. Behold, she's in the tent. He said, go get her. And notice this. And he said, but I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Sarah's in the tent door. Abraham ain't gone and got her yet. Watch this. He ain't, he ain't went out. He didn't go get her. But she's standing there listening, overhearing their conversation. She still didn't run out. Watch this. Verse 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now Abram and Sarah were old and stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women, which means she couldn't have children. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being so old? Telling Abraham, I don't believe this about me having no children. I just I just don't believe. I, I don't I don't believe. She laughs, not with joy. But she laughs with unbelief and doubt. All right. Verse 13. And the Lord said unto Abram, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child when I'm, which I'm old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Underline that. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? What are you dealing with right now? Hmm? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Huh? Is there anything too wonderful for Jehovah, God, to perform? Oh, glory. At the appointed time, I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not. She lied. Uh-oh. There we go. For she was afraid. Unbelief uh, begins to fuel fear. When you start, when you have an unbelief, or when you have, amen, a lack of faith, amen, then you start falling into all kind of other vices and psychological warfare, amen, from, watch this, God bless you, from unbelief to fear, from fear, denial. Are you with me? Sarah denied sin, I didn't lie. She laughed, verse 15, she lied. He said, no, but you did laugh. So she gets rebuked. By them saying, but you did laugh. Now, verse 16. All right. Verse 16 to 22. And um, uh, we're going to stop here in just a second. Bear with me. Now, what we have here is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The, the three men are on their way to judge the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of sin. And I want to take my time when I get to Sodom and Gomorrah. So that we can more so dig out what the text is saying versus what people say about Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. Or teach or project about Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abram realizes that these three divine visitors that are passing through are heading somewhere. 
And guess where they're going? Sodom and Gomorrah. One of the persons or the divine personalities that is among the three is the Lord himself. All right. This is called the pre-incarnate Christ or another form of God. So what we have in a personality. So what we have is the Lord himself. All right. Accompanied by two angels. Guess where they're going? Sodom and Gomorrah. Judgment is on the way. Here we go. And by the way, be careful what you say about homosexuals. Let me try it again. Be careful what you say about homosexuals. And yes, I do understand what the Bible says about it, the people's position about it. I get all of that. But at the same token, let's see what the book says. All right? Let's see what the book says. Because when you really look at the essence of why Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed, it's not due to one particular act of sin. Oh, no. It's more than just one more than one thing going on down there in Sodom and Gomorrah, but I'm going to show you why people say that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of homosexuality, because what they do, they highlight one or two verses and say that's why they, the city was brought down. Well, if that's the case, America wouldn't be standing. Tweet that. A whole lot of immorality and sexual perversion going on in America. I ain't even got to the third world countries yet. So be careful. It's not the only thing that God is upset about, all right? There are many other things that God is upset about. So you be mindful, be careful. Watch this, here we go. We're just gonna read a little bit of it. And the men, chapter 18, verse 16, rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abram went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, and the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, underline verse 20, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it which has come unto me. If not, I will know. And the men, the angels, turned their faces from thence, from Abraham, and went where, y'all? Toward Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abram stood yet before the Lord. Abraham's going to pray. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Abraham's prayer is for Lot. Why? Lot's down there in Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all. <laughs> yeah, he's going to pray for him. Yeah, he's going to pray. He's going to pray. We're going to talk about that when we come back. I want to pause right here and ask you to prayerfully consider reading, amen, chapter 18, bless the Lord. I want you to read it. Then I want you to prayerfully consider reading chapter 19 so we come back and have a discussion Amen. We'll all be on the same page. Now, as we now prepare to come to the conclusion of our study, I hope you've been blessed. Or if you have, to God be the glory. I want to, at this time, extend an invitation of salvation to those of you that may not be in fellowship with God or in fellowship with the church and have not surrendered to Jesus Christ. A, B, and C. A, acknowledge. Somebody say acknowledge. You got to acknowledge you have a sinner. That's right. You can't come before God in your own righteousness. Oh, Lord, I have sinned. And every sinner, if you won't go into heaven, standing in need of a Savior, I recommend Jesus. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. C, confess with your mouth. You got to confess your own. Speak up. Fess up for your own stuff. We're trying to get everybody else to do it. No, you do it. Talk about you. Amen. If you're willing to do that, take it to the Lord in prayer. You don't have to tell me. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to pray with you and others who are not watching right now. And you pray for that person. Amen. That child, woman, boy, girl, whoever it may be that's on your heart right now. Because we're going to intercede on behalf of others. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are watching. Pray for those, oh God, that are standing in the need of prayer, for those that are making a decision to come to you. We submit before you this study, this word. Touch their hearts in a special way. Draw them.
to thy son Jesus. We pray for those not only that are watching and listening, those that will come back later and review it on our website and look at the lesson over and over again. Share it with others. And we're praying, oh God, in Jesus' name, that some souls touched, some life changed, heart converted, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. And they said amen, amen. God bless you. My time is up. Thank you for yours. Look forward to seeing you. Lord's will, I'll be back at 6.30 today for round number two. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And we love you in the Lord again. Announcement, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10.15 morning worship this Sunday. There's a word from the Lord. And the first Sunday in June, please don't forget this. First Sunday in June. Somebody say first Sunday. Antioch is going to have an in-service gathering. That's right. We're coming together, y'all. But we can only do 50% capacity. And we're going to have to make sure we wear our masks and we sit accordingly and we practice social distancing. All right? So get here early if you want to see. That's right. I'm giving you a month plus notice. A month plus notice. Thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for such a blessed pastor's anniversary. Uh, my 22nd anniversary in February. God bless you. The 28th of February. Many of you came by. Many of you sent gifts. Many of you dropped cards in the mail. Amen. We just thank God for you. Amen. We love you. Appreciate you. 22 years right here at the same church. Oh, glory to his name. Amen. Preaching the same gospel. With that being said, we're going to close out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Jesus being our center. Gospel being our message. Our target is still the lost, the least, and the left out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. Have a beautiful evening.